So good evening, everyone. Welcome to yet another interesting webinar. I am Dr. Richie Saxena. I am the founder and director of Carebotics. Carebotics is a social impact consultancy firm that bridges the accessibility gap between technologies and the communities that need them the most. We organize nationwide networks, projects, and educational programs for professionals and organizations who are keen to use futuristic technologies, such as drones, for social good. We operate India Flying Labs, the India chapter of Flying Labs Network, which is active in 28 countries, led by local leaders and startups. We use drones, data, robotics, and remote sensing for applications such as healthcare, disasters, conservation, development, and youth empowerment. We have been organizing a series of webinars during the COVID-19 season to educate and share experiences from ground zero by our active network partners who have demonstrated that technologies can be indeed effectively used for major public health emergencies, such as COVID-19. Our first webinar, we discussed drones for COVID-19 response, where we showcased six leaders who were crowdsourcing efforts of available drones and drone pilots to support the local governments. Our second webinar, we discussed drones for emergency response, where we focused on ethical practices, safety guidelines, and presented cases from our teams who have used drones for various kinds of emergencies. Today, we are going to talk about mapping for public health emergencies. We will be exploring applications where drones can be useful as a data collection tool and can work with mapping tools to create meaningful insights for decision makers, local actors, and communities at large. Talking about Carebotics, what we do, we have several projects which are ongoing. The key of that one is Carebotics Education, where we are taking up training programs and we'll be announcing professional development programs very soon. First assignment that we took up when we founded ourselves was UAV Rapid Response Task Force. The idea of this task force was whenever emergencies or disasters happen, it is impossible for one team to reach to the affected population very quickly. So we wanted to have local teams spread out throughout the country who can take the lead during disasters. And we have been very successful in doing that. We started off during Kerala disasters, but we could not do much. When Odisha cyclone happened, we were able to do something. But when the flood season of 2019 happened, our teams were deployed in Maharashtra, Punjab, Karnataka, and even Odisha. The next project that we had taken up, it's called Project Kerodrome. Project Kerodrome is focusing on having healthcare drones available in all the districts of India. It is an ongoing project, so I wouldn't say how far we have reached. A very important project that we are doing, it's called Project Wings. The idea of Project Wings is to introduce drones to school students by engaging them in interactive activities using drones. We have amazing things going on there, but the best part of that is drones for daughters because we want more and more girls and women to be a part of the drone industry. India Flying Labs was the major, major project that we took up. We started about two years back, but now we have almost 35 network partners within India itself. It's a growing community where everybody is welcome. We have currently more than 200 professionals in our network. And I'm very glad with these outreach efforts, such as these webinars, we are able to reach out to more and more professionals every day. What are the goals of whatever we do? We bring professionals and organizations together to form a strong, dedicated knowledge and resource sharing community that is keen on using technologies for social good. We bridge the accessibility gap and make technologies available to the communities who need them the most. We come together to solve silent challenges, such as disasters, conservation, healthcare, and development. Now just to talk about what is the value of mapping in public health emergencies. These are the kind of dashboards we have been watching almost every day since the coronavirus was declared as a global pandemic. It started affecting us personally because our travels were hindered. 
our movements were hindered. Now with the lockdown, we have been forced to go into self isolation into maintaining social distance. So almost every day of our life, we are looking at maps like these and we're trying to make sense of it. But somewhere around the, around the corner, we also have, in the corner of our mind, we have this question, can we contribute to such kind of maps? Most of the maps that we see are either worldwide or nationwide. We even currently do not have world-wise maps, but imagine if we are able to create such a kind of map, if we are able to pull in such a kind of data, how amazing that would be. And can we crowdsource all our efforts, all our experts do such a thing? Maybe we can, maybe we can't. Today, we will hear from a lot of experts who will explain their experiences from the ground level. What is GIS, the Geographical Information System? Put very simply, it's the where in the whole story. We all know about who, when, what, and even why. But what about where? Now, this where has become extremely important in the current global pandemic situation. And the same thing happens in most of the disasters, most of the public health emergencies, most of the epidemics. But now we are talking about it a little more because we all are some way or the other affected. So what is the where part of it? Where gives us the geography, the location data. And this is extremely important in any kind of decision making. I'll tell you how. When we talk about mapping for public health emergencies, These are the few things that we look at. The maps or the dashboards or the information that we put forward for the public, it can be used to monitor, prepare, decide, respond, communicate, empower, and impact. If I have to tell you a couple of ideas how to, of how it would be, now for example, monitoring. Today, from all the maps which are available to us, we are able to find out where is the monitoring of the cases happening or we have to monitor the spread of the disease so we need to know okay this is the current location it started with wuhan it spread to the rest some parts of china then it spread to italy so we are seeing the progression of the disease how it is going forward and how far it has gone so now i think it is in almost 200 countries across the world so this shows the trend and the progress and this is all very closely monitored actually monitored every day with every case. How do we prepare for it? Now that we know that the disease, let's say in Mumbai, it's severe, it's the worst in the rest of the country. So we know how do we prepare Mumbai to face a disaster like this? Where do we put in what? What efforts have to be planned where? Okay. What exactly do we want to map? Places, spread, the vulnerable populations and even the capacity. We all are currently mapping just a couple of top parts of it, the cases and the spread. But the scope exists in the bottom two parts. Where are your vulnerable populations? What is their current socioeconomic status? What are the demographics like? What is the excess that they have to all the essentials, medical, daily life, income, food, shelter, we do not have that current data with us. And even the capacity, do we have the current capacity to respond to it? Where are our volunteers? Where are our health facilities? Where are we planning to have the isolation or the quarantine facilities? So this is a kind of map that I put forward for you, again map. Specific applications which are for mapping in COVID-19. You can divide them into interventions, tracking, and matching the needs to availability. These are all the ideas I'm throwing at you. Hopefully somebody will pick it up and make meaningful maps or dashboards which contain amazing information which will help decision makers. To read out to you, I will read out to you one by one. Interventions, surveillance, screening posts, testing centers, quarantine centers, treatment centers, supply chain, marking the hotspots are the boundaries. All of this can be done on a map. Today we have a map which is showing all the hotspots which have been marked in Mumbai by S3. Similar kinds of maps can be made across the country. Wherever you have a case getting detected, the entire neighborhood is cordoned off and it is marked on a map. This helps you do a lot of planning. 
Second part of this is tracking. Tracking of cases, following up with all the cases. Let us say you had symptoms, you were treated, now you have been discharged. You want to track the follow up of all of these patients. Are they still well? Are the symptoms relapsing? Do they need any kind of follow up or any kind of support? Are anybody else getting affected in the circle where they have been? That's why contacts, interactions, social distance. I just came across a study wherein the Facebook is using your cell phone data to find out what is the social distance which is being maintained. If that is possible, just imagine what all we can do with it. The social network and the forecast. So if you know that if this is the kind of trend that is happening, probably which is the next part that you need to probably start preparing for. The third part of my story is matching needs to availability. This is not happening exactly the way it should have happened. Now, for example, if you know today, if you have an active database of all the beds which are available in a hospital, and you know that these are the case loads which require it, somewhere you can match it up. Not just beds, PPE and equipment. We have a lot of volunteers who are making PPEs or a lot of factories which have doubled up to make production facilities, to become production facilities for personal protective equipment and other equipment, other medical devices. If this can be mapped together, we would know who needs what and how do you supply them. And there probably you can create a portal for everybody to interact together. Similarly for screening kits and testing kits. What is available where? What is the quantity which is available? What can, what needs to be supplied? Where are the cases getting more, uh, more intense or where the incidence of the disease is more and where do you need more testing kits? Similarly, volunteers, quarantine shelters, and CH services. Now that we know that you have very limited mobility available, probably you will now start seeing concierge services. Maybe Uber or I had seen recently something from Mahindra, wherein special vehicles have been made available to, to work as concierge services for people and even supply of essential commodities. Maybe we can find out who needs what currently and who has what. You can map it out together and there you would know where to do what. Talking about maps like these, a lot of information that we see is in the form of disease distribution maps. Here you have an international picture. You can see exactly how many active cases are available, are, are currently active in which country, and you can use various tools which are available in software like S3 to make this kind of bubble maps. The other kind of data that we are looking at is something called epidemic curve. Epidemic, sh epidemic curve shows you a timeline of all the cases. So the number of cases on the y-axis and the date of illness or onset on the x-axis. These are two examples. The top example is from uh, H1N1 influenza. You can see the kind of trend that we're looking at. And then COVID-19 is the trend which is going upwards. Probably it will start coming down eventually, just like H1N1 had come down. But we're all watching these kind of curves every day. And we're all talking about flattening the curves. These kind of words in our vocabulary have recently got introduced. But when you look at the same picture in terms of per million, as our world in data does, you get a very nice picture, probably some hope be to, to feel for countries like India wherein still per million the cases per million is very less. This again shows how the way you look at data or the way you present your data it changes the way your decision making is, is done. So it's important that the source of the data and what do you do with that data how do you rep represent the data on a map it is very very important. This is the kind of, again, information when we talk about are we bending the curve. These kinds of maps and dashboards, which again has a good location level data in front of us, can show us where exactly are we progressing in comparison to each other. Which are the other kind of maps that we look at? Are many. But what should be the main aim that you use for mapping? First three aims are where to deploy resources, where not to waste resources and what ingredients we need to start looking for. If we keep these three aims in mind, then we can start talking about how. Figure, figuring out what are you trying to do? Leveraging the information which is already available, 
and then inqu inquiring what is missing in that. What questions are you trying to answer? Do we have, these are examples again, do we have schools in socially vulnerable areas? This information can help us in deciding which schools we want to monitor. Which neighborhoods are distant from a COVID-19 testing facility? Which again tells us, where do you want to have a mobile testing clinic? Maybe, okay. The thought could be, do we have communities at a greater risk? If we know this, then we can find out where to target the outreach and how to modify operations. Which facilities and staff are in a harm's way? We can do impact planning. Now, I want all of you to find out this impact planning for COVID-19. I will share the link with you in the chat. But this is the kind of example I want to show you what US is doing. They have county by county data available of everything, of the poverty, access populations, health insurance coverage, the businesses which are in that county, the senior citizens, ICU beds available, staff beds available, or the occupied beds, that's what they mean by staff, and the available beds. The second part of this report is them about each and everything in detail. So they compared the demographics and the socioeconomic status to tell us exactly where do we want to focus on. They even have something called school enrollment. I had even seen over here wherein you have a daytime population. So there are places or there are towns, for example, South Mumbai or Andheri area, where you know that the daytime population is more than the nighttime population because everybody comes there to work. Now, when we start planning for the era beyond lockdown, we have to start looking at these things. Where do we expect the risk to be high? Unless we have these kind of data available to us, we will not be able to take wise decisions. Where do we source these data? S3 explains that there are three good sources of data, Tire 1, Tire 2, and Tire 3. Tire 1 could be government-sponsored sources and agencies like the Ministry of Health or ICMR, WHO, CDC, or even European Standards. Tire 2 could be highly documented from a reliable source such as companies, universities, or media. So we have John Hopkins, which is publishing amazing data every day. We have University of Oxford also doing that. So these become your tier two data. They're not obliged to share the data with you, but then they have good quality data available with them. The tier three could be provided by individuals or surveys or through the crowdsource information. This is where we come into picture as professionals, probably something that we can do within our reach. I want to give a gratitude, a huge gratitude to ESRI for uh, for this presentation because i'm learning a lot from them they are doing amazing ground level work across the world and they really need a salute for this they have training programs which are available on their website everybody should go out and learn more i'm also doing that i'm a doctor i'm not a technologist at all but then just because i'm curious and i really want to do something about it i'm trying to learn every day plus i have partners with me who are helping me learn every day so i'm thankful to them there as well now, I want to turn to Uttam, Uttam Podaseni from Nepal. He is the founder, co-founder and director of a company called Naksa. In Nepal, they are doing amazing job with the government of Nepal in designing dashboards, mapping solutions, and uh, even doing crowdsourcing with drones as well as data both. So, uh, Uttam, are you around? Okay. Uh, yes, Ruthie, can you hear me? Yes, Uttam. So we would like to know from you because you have worked with the government so closely how has mm -hmm. been your experience so far what was available to you what was not available to you how did you go about finding that data how did you make an amazing solution out of it so over to you Uttam. i will stop sharing my screen so that you can share yours now okay thank you Rusi. Uh, can you can you all see my screen not yet okay sorry I'm having some problem with my uh, webcam, but I think the screen should be working. Is it working now? Yes. Okay, good. So, uh, first of all, thank you for inviting me to this webinar. So when we talked yesterday and you requested me to share more about what we are doing, I actually had like um, a very short time to prepare. So I just, uh, compile screenshots from multiple different work that we are doing. So in my presentation today, I'll be mainly sharing about um, 
the dashboard work that my company together with other IT companies are doing in Nepal. But before going into my presentation, I would like to share with you all a very popular story on how mapping uh, changed the world at the time of pandemic. So this is a story from 19th century. So during 19th century, there was third cholera pandemic outbreak. And this pandemic outbreak, uh, it, it killed uh, thousands of people. But there was something that very interesting that happened in London. So there was this guy named uh, John Snow. He's actually, he was actually a doctor. So at that time, people had a misconception that cholera could be transmitted through air. But then what this doctor did was he actually mapped out all the cases in, 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 in London, in, in that one particular town. And also he mapped the location of all the water pumps in that area. So what he found, uh, what he found after doing this mapping was the case was actually more, uh, the number of cases was higher in those areas that are closer to water pump. So by preparing this map, he was able to tell the decision maker. So he was not a mapper, but he was a doctor. And by preparing a map like this, he was able to take tell uh, the decision makers that it, it is not actually the year through which the cholera is being transmitted, but there is some other reasons. And that, that other reason could be contamination in those water pumps. So later the authority, they started doing uh, more, um, they started looking more into that key issue. And then they found out that the cholera was being spread from those contaminated water pumps. So this is a story on how mapping changed the world at the time of pandemic, and it is from 19th century. So I found this story very relevant to what's going on at the moment. Moving into my presentation. So this is um, five days after the Nepal government uh, announced lockdown in the country. So my team together with other IT companies, we, we discussed among ourselves, we started talking to each other. And then we decided on creating something that, that government could use to disseminate the information about COVID-19 to the public. And also to prepare a dashboard uh, using which the government could share data on total number of cases and also map out the total facilities. So we developed a mobile application that anyone can, could use for free. And using the mobile application, the public would be able to get information regarding the daily updates of cases and also the updates regarding official information of uh, related to COVID like symptoms and how to remain safe and things like that. And also what we did was um, mapping cases was being done by a number of different other companies. But what we did uh, was we also mapped out, uh, like Ruchi mentioned earlier in her presentation that mapping vulnerable population, mapping health facilities could be something very interesting for decision makers. In the dashboard that we prepared for the government, one of the layer that we mapped is the vulnerable population. So we extracted the data from census um, CVS. So the data were not available in ready to use format. So we did some data formatting and then we created a vulnerable population age group map. So by looking at this map, the government authorities could see where uh, the vulnerable population are located and which districts have higher number of these is group. And likewise, on this map, we also overlaid some other information like health facilities. So finding very updated information on health facilities was very difficult. But then the government of Nepal over time, they released, um, they officially released COVID specific health facilities. So what we did was instead of mapping all the health facilities in the country, we mapped those particular facilities which are COVID specific. That means where COVID specific treatments were available. So in the dashboard, we also map those COVID specific health facilities. And also initially the government of Nepal only had a few testing lab only in the Kathmandu area, but now the government, they have expanded and now the labs are available across seven provinces. So over time, we also started mapping those testing labs. So anyone can go into the dashboard and they can have a look at all these data sets. So this is the first functionality that the dashboard has. And talking about the other functionality, very similar to all other dashboard, this system also has uh, facilities and case mapping. But like as we, as we are working on this system days and night, we also realize that the maps needs to be shared in, in a very uh, easy to use format because most of the people might not be able to go to the online map, click on it and interpret those information. We started preparing hard copy maps like this. So 
we used GIS, uh, ArcGIS, GIS and, and also QGIS. And then we started creating infographics like this. So previously the infographic only used to have information of um, the entire country, but now we have also started creating infographics province wise. So if you could go uh, like uh, to one particular province, then you could not just only see the cases, but also you could see how many testers, tests were performed in that particular area. So we also started doing this uh, voluntarily for, for the Ministry of Health together with some other IT companies that I have shown on, on, on the graph itself. There is another functionality that this system has. So as Ruchi was telling in her presentation that mm, mapping uh, possible cases might also help government to take uh, evidence-based decisions. So in the mobile application, there is a self-assessment form. So this is a screenshot, not from Nepal, but from outside because we are not allowed to share that data. The access is only with the government. So people could actually do their self-assessment and then send their self-assessment reports to, to the government. So until now, um, almost 20,000 people, they have submitted their, uh, they have done their self-assessment and they have submitted their data to the government. So on the back end side, the government can see a dashboard like this, where they can, uh, where they can see like uh, uh, the, the, the self-assessment reports are like categorized into three different categories, red, green, and yellow. So if somebody falls into the red zone, then the government immediately calls uh, those people and then do follow up, whether they have to be taken to quarantine or, or hospitals or facilities like that. So the concept of heat mapping was also used to help the government find out such cases. And this is all crowd mapping because the self-assessment report are being voluntarily said, sent by the public through the mobile application. Likewise, um, in this time of um, pandemic, it, uh, many people, they might not know the details about the health facilities. So what we also did was in the mobile application, there is a functionality that helps people to find out nearest health facility from their location. So in the context of Nepal, uh, the Google Maps and other mapping sources, even OpenStreetMap, all the health facilities data are not updated over there. So we developed an interface of functionality in the app where people could sort Uttam, you are not audible. Hello, am I audible? Yes. I think there is there is a problem with Uttam. I think we'll just wait for him to come back. Uttam, are you there? Hi, Ruzi, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. You can restart it. Oh, sorry. So I was in which slide? I was talking about heat maps, right? Heat maps, yes. Okay. Okay, so this is another functionality that we have in the system. You have to, and I was you have to share the screen again. You have to share the screen again. Okay. Is it working now? Yes. Okay. So just let me know if the, I am disconnected again. So there is another functionality in the system. So using the mobile app, the public could know where the nearby health facilities are located. But as we are struggling with um, data collection, at the moment, we only have location data of nearby health facilities. So we are also collecting data on the attributes of all these health facilities. So for example, what kind of health services are available in that particular health facility. So in the mobile app, people by just pressing one button, they could see their nearby health facilities. So these are the different functionalities in the system that we have developed for the ministry. And all this system was developed only in five days by a joint effort of two different IT companies and two other not-for-profit organizations. So at the moment, we are working very closely with the ministry and we are coming up with new functionalities and features that could help health ministry make more use of all these data set that have been prepared. So as Ruchi mentioned about crowd mapping, I would like to share a few things about how this could be done by people by several people around the country. So there is this particular site that has been developed by American Red Cross and a number of other agencies jointly. So the site is called healthsites.io. So what this website does is it automatically pulls data from OpenStreetMap. 
So in many cases in country like ours, we don't have the Google Maps is not very updated. So if you go to OpenStreetMap, it's a crowd mapping platform and anybody could contribute by adding the details of locations around their um, around their places. So this particular platform, healthsites.io, what it does is it has a extracted data of health facilities only. So if you want to do health facility mapping of any state in India or Nepal, so what you could do is you could log into the platform and start filling up the data. You don't need to worry about learning any particular technicalities. There is a simple form you could log into the system. And if you know any details of the health facility, you could go into this platform and you could do the mapping yourself. So this is just um, one in one thing that we are trying to do. We haven't done this yet because we are currently busy working on the health ministry system. But this is something that I wanted to share with all of uh, the participants because it could be something very interesting for your particular area as well. So there are two more, two more initiatives that I want to share before I end my presentation. So one is, so at this, during this time of pandemic in, in the context of Kathmandu Valley, there are almost no flights. So there are few, maybe one or two flights at the moment. So the government is sending those flights for, for medical support to two people in, in in multiple locations so what we we came up with this idea of utilizing this time to map the entire Kathmandu valley so we are working on this by partnering with multiple other agencies working on geospatial sector so just yesterday we submitted our proposal because there were a lot lot of annex document that we needed to work on so just yesterday we have submitted this proposal to to the municipalities in Kathmandu valley and our main objective is if we could utilize this time to do something meaningful and the government could later use this data for urban planning for for maintenance of the road road infrastructure and other facilities so we are also working on this this particular initiative and there is a one last initiative that i want to share this is at this time of pandemic many people whether it's individuals or group of agencies they are coming together to develop several innovative solutions so what we thought was, why not we map all these innovations that are being done by different people? Because in many cases, the innovations are being, and um, I mean like a same, same kind of activity is happening in multiple locations. So we are developing a portal together with the Ministry of Science and Technology, the Robotics Association of Nepal, and together with other different partners. So this portal would be officially handed over to the ministry and they can use it as an innovation mapper platform. So they can go, I mean, who is doing where in that particular location? So, if this kind of platform is developed, then from the side of the government and even from the side of private sector, they could go into the platform and see who is doing what, where, and also the innovators they can post what kind of support they need to complete their project. So, it may be any public health related project, or, or it may be any robotics or ventilator development, or apps or information sharing regarding projects. So this is the, another kind of mapping application that we are doing. So before I conclude my presentation, I found this interesting quote in the article that I was looking into while I was making my presentation for presentation slide about the cholera outbreak in, in London. So maps, they can tell a story in a very, in, in a language that everyone can understand. So I, I think whether it's public health or any other, um, any other situation, maps can be a very interesting storytelling tool. Thank you, Ruthie. And thank you all. Thank you very much, Uttam. Your video is still not working, I guess, right? Yeah, it's still not working. I, I want to show my face to prove that I'm not an alien speaking. <laughs> <laughs> my video is not working, sorry. I don't know why. No problem. It looks like some... You may need to uh, stop sharing a screen now. Oh, okay. Sorry. Mm, just a moment. Has it disturbed now? Yes. Yes. Thank you so much. That was Uttam Padeseni from Nepal. He also is the leader for Nepal Flying Labs. The way we are doing India Flying Labs, he is taking care of Nepal Flying Labs. And even as Nepal Flying Labs, they've been doing an amazing job of connecting all the drone professionals in Nepal and, uh, and do some great job there. So thank you so much, Uttam, for joining us today. This was really insightful. And I'm hoping that many of our professionals who are in this webinar and who will be watching this webinar later, we, they will be able to benefit from all the ideas that you have shared with all of us.
uh, anybody has any question for uttam at this stage at this point of time uttam i have a question for you uh, how yes. can we learn something as beginners in in gi something very easily and quickly and start contributing so if you are willing to learn something on gis the very basic i would suggest is so if you want to contribute on mapping open street mapping could be a, the best tool to start with because open street mapping is a crowd mapping platform and if in, in if you if you want to utilize this free time mapping facilities around the place that you are living so for example you can map all the cafeteria or you can map all the health facility in budal and kanta area just by creating an account on open street map and then uploading data of all the locations that you know and it's also very simple to use so there are so many tutorials available and it's it's not it does not require any specific technical knowledge so if you want to learn gis it could be a little tricky because gis is something technical and you need a understanding of coordinate system and details like this so i'd like to suggest starting from open street map and also google earth might be another interesting platform if you want to learn how to create different map data sets so for example you could learn you could simply download google earth and you could start creating point line and polygon data set very easily it's it's just like using a paint paint application and then only you can move to gis so that you will have you'll already have some mapping knowledge using open street map and google earth so that 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 could be a way to learn it great thank you so much uttam and uttam uh, also one more question about the drone project that you are trying to do where you are uh, have you started it what is your plan further so the project has not started at the moment uh, what we have done is we created we submitted a letter to all the metropolitan i mean we submitted a letter to kathmandu vaktapur lalitpur and other municipalities and when we submitted the letter we are also asked about the insurance insurance document so the government requires a third party insurance because when we do the drone flights there might be some accidents um, due to some mechanical failures or other reasons and so we had to spend almost 3 or 4 days to figure out how we could do a drone insurance and just day before yesterday we found out that there are some companies that provide public liability insurance so it is not actually drone drone third party insurance but it's a public liability insurance and we have we did that public liability insurance so now both of our drones we have third party insurance for both of the drones and yesterday we we submitted our application with all the documents in annex so now the municipalities will forward this application to home ministry and when the municipality if the municipality is able to convince the home ministry on the benefits of this map data for disaster management and urban planning then then hopefully we will get the permission and we will start to do it but at the moment we are in the permission securing stage thank you so much sudam we have uh, saksham botani from inshine whose platform is amazing when you talk about crowd sourced drone mapping we had given a demonstration in nagaland of how to go about doing that but i think this is the time when we can start considering solutions like these wherein even if we are in the whole of the country we can start contributing to the drone maps which are being produced and these large scale projects so saksham are you around hi ruchi yes i am there hi saksham would you like to put on your video yeah 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 sure sure i'll do that so uh, yeah hi saksham hi hi everyone thanks ruchi thanks for uh, actually inviting me on the webinar uh, thank you saksham so for uh, for from you we would like to know there were some projects which you were talking about in noida and delhi ncr wherein the drone teams had done mapping of the vulnerable locations and they had used your platform to do something you would like to know about that and you had mentioned another thing wherein you are using the maps to help companies like zomato and swiggy to reach to the communities how exactly are you doing that and you would like to know about it so i'm over switching over to you do you have a presentation to show us yeah yeah, yeah i'll i'll i don't have a presentation of, as such but yes i'll convey these things well through multiple screenshots great and okay so let me share my screen first 
Okay. Uh, hi guys, uh, pleasure having you all on the webinar. Uh, so I'll actually continue uh, from the part uh, Ruchi and Uttam actually left. So they they contributed well regarding the need of GIS, which is uh, geographical information system, which actually tells us about the location intelligence, uh, giving us the question of where in our society. So now since we are being affected and now uh, we are actually coming ahead uh, with the crowdsource mapping data sets, uh, it's, it's a good, good way that we can contribute to, to the society uh, by putting in some validated sources wherein the decision making can become actually very easy. So uh, talking about InShine, uh, uh, like I, I'm ap actually representing InShine, uh, which is a technology company. Uh, we actually build applications uh, based out of GIS, uh, specifically designed for teams. Uh, you can consider it a uh, next uh, GIS technology, uh, very similar to Google Earth, QGIS, uh, ArcGIS softwares, wherein uh, this this application actually allows you to work without any prior GIS knowledge, and you can contribute to the society in a good manner without actually having a GIS knowledge. So, I'll actually come down to uh, a recent case study uh, that. Uh, we, along with a company called as Better Drones, was very active in Noida uh, area, did with one police department, which is Gautam Nagar, Gautam Buddh Nagar Police Department. So I'll show you a map of how actually uh, this, this uh, GIS technology helped Gautam Buddh Nagar Police Station. So in the center, you can see like this is a colony, uh, which you can see here. It's a, this is a drone map for this colony. So this is actually a slum area with very high population density. And we, there is a Corona COVID positive case, which have been figured out the, in the slums. Now, Police, police people are actually considering this as a sort of time bomb for them because uh, spreading of coronavirus in the slums areas can, can be very critical. And hence, Better Drones company actually took the initiative uh, by talking to the DCP of that particular area and mapped this whole area, which, which has given them now the clear picture where they can actually put the barricades. I think you can see this yellow bars on the roads, which are the barricades that has been put right away after seeing on, after working on these maps. And rest this barricades, besides this, all the police stations near to three kilometers area, which is represented by the circle, red circle has been marked with with potential quarantine centers and hospitals as well so i would rather say this like this is this is actually a crowdsourced data which is helping gautam budnagar police station in figuring out the planning so uh, i'll i'll actually get you to one of the thing that up government has did so there is uh, a corona uh, testing that has to be done for every policeman and after fo after every 14 days they have actually go they have to actually go to quarantine so there is a limited workforce and they have to uh, work like really hard and that's why there is actually a need for them to have these kind of technologies and help coming in where they can save their time by mapping out things through through various uh, crowdsourcing initiatives, which can in turn save their time and they can help uh, decide 
like uh, if if there is that much population in this area how much workforce is required and so like this is actually the third part the uh, ruchi was telling matching needs with the availability if you have limited workforce then you have to be very particular about uh, allocating those police workforce in which areas and that's where this this gis technology is helping them out now other crucial part for this case study was uh, like the movements of uh, e-commerce food companies uh, since uh, you have to actually barricade the 3 km zone uh, this blue uh, barricades uh, actually show the roadblocks for for that area now for these particular companies police have been allocating passes and they have designed one particular roads which is confined to uh, the companies which can deliver food in these areas and you won't believe this like this is a good area with with a living population of 70000 people and you actually have to feed them uh, so that they actually don't come out and you can actually save uh, the covid from spreading like a fire so this is one of the case study like which actually helped uh, uh, police uh, personals uh, one important parameter that i want to share with you is uh, like police hierarchy uh, works in a manner like there is one superintending police senior superintending police which is ssp then there is a sp then you have dcps uh, now is a time when these people are coming uh, they, they are they are actually coming together with everyone on field uh, without the post uh, and hierarchy and uh, this tool uh, that is in shine that i'm talking that i'm showing you is actually helping uh, them to be on board and take decisions uh while being on the same place so like initially they were doing it on paper and pen uh which is actually solving their problem but but now since they have they are on the same page if anything comes up they can right away uh, put it there which uh, which helps in communicating better and now the decision making has become really faster for them uh for things like uh, similar to this how actually uh, you people can contribute uh, which uttam also mentioned uh, in his uh, presentation like uh, google earth is is, is a good uh, source of data wherein you will find hospitals you will find in uh, um, police stations and you will get all those things in kml and shape files uh which which is well well communicated method for any kind of gis data and every sort of application like uh, qgis arcgis inchain and there are many more are actually uh, allowing kml and shape files to to get loaded in the manner so google earth is a good way wherein you can specifically pick out hospitals uh, you can pick out uh, Uh, other road blocks areas in a form of kml and shape files and then you can uh, like start uh, contributing it to the police departments so that they can take decisions well uh, on time other application i would uh, suggest you to start with is qgis which is very which is free uh, it's an open source initiative uh, and and quickly allow you uh, to get on board with gis maps uh, the other application as uh, ruchi highlighted uh, was uh, arcgis uh, this is a bit of a complex application uh, i mean uh, those who are well versed with gis uh, will will find this very good to adapt but uh, uh, you can start with google earth qgis and then come on to arcgis for for actually preparing this kind of maps or if you uh, like actually want to come on board with 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 sort of applications there is a project library that we we have 
put in uh, over which you will find various sort of maps data sets which you can download and then like start learning on gis activities uh, there is one uh, data uh, that uh, can uh, help uh, police officials if if you can uh, find somebody in nearby i am sure like uh, most of you have been already contributing with police department in the surveillance activities with uh, uavs so if if you can put out the census gis data like what sort of population data we have in the nearby area in the specifically in the hot sports region uh, it would be a good value addition to the uh, police officials wherein they can figure out how much resources they have and how much they have uh, to actually uh, pull on board with the other talking to other uh, societies uh, so that everything can be uh, put on onto the covid preparation systems so uh, this was long back like uh, it was a similar initiative we did of uh, mapping out the testing labs uh, but now uh, it's it's actually more important that uh, we focus uh, our entire efforts on hotspots uh, which uh, which most probably after 20th in india we will be having like hotspot ceiling uh, entirely focusing our uh, uh, energy and efforts on hotspot I i'll i'll share i'll share this links uh, at at the end of my presentation uh, which covers uh, well in deep uh, like how uh, uh, police officials can be benefited and how you can uh, actually contribute to them uh, this is a good q and a session we had uh, with uh, one of the ips officer uh, like how actually uh, they are using uh, drones and aerial maps uh, where these things are helping them uh, how they are act they are planning workforce and 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 many more uh, like what what i already talked about but this this have a, a well summarized form of uh, thing which can actually help help you uh, to understand the applications so that's that's all from uh, my side now um, like i'll be happy to answer questions and over to you ruchi and uh, vikram for the uh, parts uh, that that uh, that is remaining Well, thank you very much, Sachin. Sachin, uh, would you also like to talk about InShine platform? How different teams can come together and collaborate online? Sure. Uh, so, uh, like, why we actually started building on this application uh, was a reason wherein a collaborative effort uh, is is required in this disaster kind of scenarios. Uh, now, this application is based in a manner like we can. be on boarded everybody can 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 see this and work start working together so if i'll share it share this map to uh, anyone uh, he can start contributing and that's how like the social effectiveness will work and we will uh, one time will actually come when everybody will start contributing in the in their particular areas so that on a state level also like if cm or a pm wants to see they can see uh, what sort of uh, things are happening how the barricadings are being placed in their localized areas because uh, this is how uh, like normally uh, we we actually cure uh, starting from the base ground efforts to coming up to the uh, top level where the decision making can be more stringent uh thank you sachin one question for you would be this entire exercise is exercise be done without the drones do you feel uh i would rather say uh, like uh, this uh, uh, this uh, satellites are a good source of data so there is no need uh, no specific needs uh, of using a uav unless and until it's a slum area in slums areas i would highly recommend using a uav because of po higher, higher population density and you will have more clearer picture uh, for the police officials to take decision but if you have a satellite map then uh, you will you can start pulling in 
uh, different sources, creating this workspace, creating boundaries around this, uh, putting in barricades. This this uh, satellite things can can help you a lot uh, without uh, using UAVs as well. Okay, and what about data security and data privacy? How does if we start working on your software or similar softwares, how do we ensure that if you're talking about places like slum, because all of these images are extremely geotagged. Uh, right. it, there is there is a high level of geotagging which happens and high level of accuracy. So how do we ensure that personal identifi identifiable information and uh, community identifiable information is protected in these kind of applications? Sure. Uh, so coming on to the uh, softwares for, for the, these kind of softwares. Uh, so there are sort of two type of applications wherein one is uh, obviously the desktop application. Uh, which like QGIS, ArcGIS and Google Earth are, you actually have to download the application and then you start working. So this uh, desktop application is entirely safe because you are working on your desktop and you, if you are putting on, on the data, then it's your data and uh, the everything remains on your desktop. But when you will talk about coming to uh, online GIS platforms like this and many more, like you have many more GIS platforms which are working online, uh, they have a privacy policy because they are very uh, like uh, this kind of data, as you said, is very uh, confidential uh, as to where are the hotspots where uh, these high resolution images are uh, can give you actually very detailed information which which, which should not be uh, put into the wrong hands. So they have a privacy policy and I'll actually recommend you to make uh, private projects in this uh, kind of online GIS environment uh, wherein you share it to what people you want and with the uh, defined uh, uh, limits uh, which you can choose obviously with InShine and many many more applications uh, that's where uh, this privacy policy and security are concerned uh, other thing is like anything you will find on online things like uh, we are using a zoom application uh, which is uh, which is an online application uh, and uh, there are some people who are talking about the security for zoom zoom as well but yes uh, if any any company starts with the online thing uh, the first and foremost thing they have to maintain is they have to maintain the security concerns uh, we being uh, serving uh, uh, nationalities like europe and us as well uh, we have to maintain the gdpr compliances which are uh, well uh, into the uh, uh, limits of like your security reasons plus we have a uh, sort of two secure two two secure way uh, with with the aws uh, amazon web services on the background with their security and one security uh, from our end which which makes it more resilient thank you so much saksham anybody has any questions for saksham I think there's one chat that came. No, that's not for you. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. So, uh, Saksham, anything else that you want to add for our users? Uh, I, I'm open to questions, uh, but I really uh, recommend uh, like uh, once talking uh, to the police department because this is the exercise uh, that really helped uh, them saving a lot of time uh, in this time because they are working 24 hours. Uh, we, we have seen police officials working 24 hours. Uh, they, are, they are sleeping on 5 a.m. and uh, getting up on 8 a.m. So uh, if you can talk about uh, them and you can help them uh, in this need of art, that would be a great help to those people. Thank you so much, Saksham, for this session. You can you. Uh, stop sharing a screen. Okay, now we have Vikram, Vikram Meena, who is the co-founder of Tech Eagle, who is now a part of Zomato. Vikram had used his drones in Delhi, NCR and Noida, and I think Gurgaon as well. So probably Vikram can tell us, Vikram, uh, we would like to know from you, how did you go about doing a project and what was the expectation which was put forth to you from the government or from the police or from the authorities? How was the entire experience at the ground level? And do you feel that you felt you experienced some challenges and how did you overcome them? 
thank you, Dr. Ruchi, for inviting for this webinar. Uh, and uh, I think till now, you all three uh, and four people have shared very insightful details about the maps and how uh, Saksam and uh, better drones use this particular case study, or uh, you can say a trial for police people uh, to map out a complete colony. And I think uh, this was a good work. So the similar particular thing, like so before talking about my work, uh, I add up to the what he was explaining and how we can take it forward to the greater level to help uh, combat the COVID-19. So uh, Saksam definitely we agree that uh, whatever you and Kano did as a project, that's uh, completely re required right now for uh, hot sports situations. So uh, as even uh, Ruchi, you were saying that uh, we have hot sports right now. But there are, uh, you can say, nearby colonies and the uh, geographies which might be uh, soon converting into the hot spots. So even to plan hot spots, which are right now containment zones are, and who, uh, which zones can become containment zones in the hot spots recently in near future. So for both these things uh, to plan and to execute for police people also, it will really help. Now, uh, coming to the uh, drone surveillance and then uh, announcement thing, how we are doing it. So, uh, first of all, uh, we are providing them the uh, drone infrastructure. So, let's say we talk, for example, let's take a one district in Delhi. So, in uh, one central district Delhi, there are uh, four to five different zones and contain, uh, containment areas as well as the hotspots. So, we deploy our, let's say, six drones there. And every single drone is live connected through our server to a central dashboard where uh, the police officials uh, in DCP office or in commissioner office, they can completely watch what is exactly happening. Then there is a police official uh, just uh, like uh, the pilot is assisted by and the police official directly looking at a screen uh, in real time will tell the on ground staff that kindly go there and disperse the crowd which is gathering there. On top of this particular thing, recently we have added a MLAI layer, which automatically tells that in this particular area, there is a crowd which is uh, not following social distancing and it is in the greater number, like more than five or more than 10. That particular frame of picture with the geolocation, within a minute goes to directly a different API call and from there, we are trying to send it to the respective SHO's uh, mobile phone. Then they can directly route and go to that particular location immediately when the drone is still in the uh, air. So this is solving the response time. And even we need not to deploy many police personals on the ground because a lot of police personals are also getting positive for the COVID-19. We need to save their lives as well. So this particular drone tool is really helping uh, in surveillance monitoring. and then. Instead of sending now uh, the police personnel to dispose the crowd, we are sending our drones fitted with the siren and the speaker. So it can directly go there and then uh, it will pass on a message that kindly go inside your homes and uh, the usual protocol which police follows. So it is uh, really effective in the uh, Delhi area. We have been doing it since uh, 5th of April. And right now we are doing in uh, four districts of central, uh, like including central, south, north, east, and Dwarka side. So uh, working with the police uh, personals right now was the, I think, uh, most easiest uh, thing. Uh, earlier it uh, used not to be like this. Now uh, this particular approach initially uh, was decentralized. Now we are trying to consolidate every single effort because a lot of drone pilots, drone companies, owners are coming together and in a consolidated way, if we are trying to propose the state that this solution along with the mapping solution, which let's say a different team or a company and a group of people can provide this particular consolidated solution will give them a better picture, even integrated with the map. So now what we are trying to uh, achieve is with the map, Let's say uh, Einstein and the Kano created a map of uh, Noida area. Uh, there are two, three uh, containment and hotspot zones. Even uh, they are using right now just only for planning that, okay, how to plan the route of the uh, food delivery personals or uh, essential goods supply or movement of, let's say, uh, you can say healthcare personals. 
so even uh, during this particular areas uh, there are a lot of people coming out of their homes uh, because those are very congested areas and people cannot uh, stay in a single room when they are living in a uh, like numbers of 8 or 9 in a single building uh, in a maybe 10 by 15 feet uh, area so even police is not able to put them back uh, inside uh, in their homes so uh, we are trying to put all these images with the geo location to the real time map so police can look that okay in my area there are these five zones where the particular uh, crowd gathering is happening and how to monitor that and on every day basis now we are putting analytics onto it that how this particular solution is being effective uh, on the first day how many these kind of clusters were found and what was the response time from the police side and uh, what was the reaction from the public side and when we send these drones these uh, drones are not uh, capturing and recording any sort of data uh, neither on our cloud nor on any uh, hard drive system so that's how we are taking care of the uh, data privacy as well and recently media nama covered uh, in depth how, what is the standard operating procedure for the surveillance and monitoring and as well as the data privacy we are following so i'll share that link as well uh, so everybody can read that so uh, then particularly we record only those snapshots where we are founding that okay there is a uh, crowd gathering happening and generally 90 uh, or 90 to 95% drone flying happens only over the roads on the streets we do not fly our drones uh, you can say through the rooftops and those kind of colony areas so we need to uh, ensure that the people are not outside on the roads even uh, they should not be in a greater number on their rooftops so uh, just to monitor that from a very good height like uh, 100 meter or 110 meter uh, below 400 feet only uh, we are flying these drones and trying to get the algorithm active that they can automatically analyze that there is a uh, group of people then we go down there and then we uh, like buzz our siren or we send our uh, speaker drone so it's uh, getting effective and now we are trying to replicate the same model to the different states also other than delhi uh, in a consolidated way with the drone federation india and as ruchi you are also taking lead in uh, a lot of different areas uh, to consolidate local uh, companies and as well as drone pilots who are right now doing mapping or uh, photography and cinematography so i think uh, in a consolidated way if the drone industry comes together and builds such kind of a solution then we will be definitely creating good impact and we will be able to combat up to some level the covid as well so this is the uh, finding which we had till now broadly and uh, just i'll uh, share one very uh, basic screen which uh, works as a dashboard just a second so uh can you share it uh ruchi uh, my screen is visible yes it's visible okay so uh this is the kind of dashboard which we have created right now this particular is just for sample just to show you so i can uh, i cannot show you the live uh, feeds coming from uh, ground level so uh these are the dashboards and they can live see in all the areas and right now we are flying close to 20 drones uh, in delhi and uh, complete feed is going to the central dashboard and respective districts feed is going to their dcp's office so uh, that is the one thing and the ai uh, layer which we were talking about to count i'll just play this particular video uh, now it is in the media so i can play it so uh, here the this was the crowd so it was the original uh, video then we did this particular analytics i'll uh, show you that just a second
Uh, while Vikram is putting this all up, I would like to appeal to all the people who are watching us live right now on Facebook, on YouTube, on our website. Please, if you have any kind of questions, just put it in the comments. I'm looking at your feed as well. Thank you. Yes, Ruchi, I'm just sharing again my screen. Yes, can you see it? Yes, Vikram, we can see it. So I think uh, just let me play the video. So during the, I think this particular call, I might not be able to play the video. Can you guys see it? No, I think. Uh, okay, so I'll share that particular video uh, link after this particular webinar right now, not uh, wasting the time. So uh, this particular consolidated effort by the complete industry even will uh, enlighten the government and the regulators and the other authorities that in, the, in such kind of pandemic situations, if drone industry can help for upcoming uh, disasters and uh, different kind of uh, healthcare situations, we should be prepared uh, in a better way. Even right now we have uh, delivery drones uh, available for medicine delivery and other kind of use cases, but uh, those are in numbers like, like four or five drones, which can cover only a very small area, like a complete district, it can cover definitely, but we cannot scale it up to complete state level and the country level. We are not ready with that kind of infrastructure and uh, we have not uh, been doing very uh, vast testings on a, uh, that kind of a scale. So uh, before uh, like, next situation which arises before that we should be prepared as an industry uh, for such kind of uh, pandemics and disasters that's all i think i have uh, dr Ruchi. thank you so much vikram this was an amazing thing that you shared with us thank you for being so open about all the projects that you're doing this is very helpful this was also very inspiring for all of us who are in in various parts of the country and uh, yes the drone federation of india drone squad drone age and drone lab we are, we are able to do a lot of activities together in various parts obviously as a startup as a one as one company as a small team it is impossible to scale up you have to come together when you're talking about scaling up to limits like national level or a state level or even a even a city level so yes it's an amazing job which is going on in the whole of the country and uh, we are trying our best to do as much as we can with the help of the local government and the local support that we have and this is also a, a platform where I would, I would like to appeal if any of you are from the government or from the authorities who are watching our video or who know somebody very closely then please reach out to them and tell them that there is a lot that we can do together provided we are allowed to do it provided we are trusted and the trust has been built in the industry it has been built in the people who are working and there is so much to do more in this webinar we are talking about mapping because yes drones for mapping is the classic application we are trying to understand besides the surveillance which is the latest application that we are seeing which is happening countrywide what else we can do with the drones which are already there what else we can do with the small drones that are available with us like it could be phantom it could be mavic most of the people have those drones they don't really have the custom drones so with the same available drone we can definitely develop our capacity and do a lot more if we all come together. Thank you so much, Vikram, for that. I think there were some questions for you, Vikram. Uh, Gaurav, would you like to come and talk about it? Your question to Vikram. Uh, I think I can read out the question and then I can sure. address it. Sure. Uh, just want to know this stream is done using LTE. Yes, so this is the stream which is uh, being transferred to the server via LTE, uplink and downlink. And all these uh, like uplink and downlink are completely secured and they are uh, based on the AWS server only. So there is nothing to worry about and we are not recording uh, speci specifically by choice. We have made sure that we are not recording any stream at any time. Uh, thanks, Vikram, for the answer. I would also like to know: uh, your AI engine, your AI engines are also running real time, or you are running them on the back end on your cloud? So uh, right now we are implementing the live thing that the uh, AI engines will be uh, on a different, uh, you can say, uplink and downlink, and then particular information will come to us 
as a notification as soon as we get a cloud. So it will not be working on a completely stream uh, because of the load uh, which it will put. So whenever there is a crowd gathering happening, more than five people who are not following the social distancing, it will uh, send a notification to the uh, one particular dashboard which we made and with the photograph with that particular frame and the location so it can immediately send somebody the police can send somebody there to take some action or we can send our uh, speaker drones as well if uh, the drone is available there then and there only uh, that is really interesting to know uh, thank you for the answer and another question what type of equipment are you using for these kinds of operations uh, what kind of drones or what kind of other equipment? What, what, what type of drones? So uh, drones are generally right now uh, mixed of everything. Custom drones, there are DJI drones as well. Uh, so it, it is the mix of uh, both, but more than 50% uh, right now available are the DJI drones only. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, all the drones and the pilots are completely crowdsourced and every single person uh, who is coming forward, we are really like grateful to them that they are coming in this particular situation and supporting the cause. Thank you. Thank you so much, Vikram. We have some more professionals from the GIS industry in this webinar today. Would you like to share your experiences if you have been able to contribute or something that you would like to contribute to mapping initiatives in India or in your locality? Can I hear from you, please? Actually, Ruchi, I would like to speak up about the uh, drone mapping, but it wouldn't be related to the healthcare, uh, the healthcare pandemic right now. But yeah, I have come across a really good application of drone mapping for actually search and rescue. So yeah, for that application, so you actually, if it's a search and rescue application, uh, rescue application, and you have a lost person probably say in a hundred acre land. So what we do is we create a 2D orthomosy X out of uh, out of that area. And we have an application called Locate.life. So that uh, that particular platform, we upload our images on that, and we actually tell the platform that we are looking for a particular color of RGB color. So if a person is wearing a red color T-shirt, so we'll upload the platform for that red color RGB. And our uh, data with XF data and our geotagged images, that data uh, that platform will actually look for that red pixel, and it gets. And, and that application makes it really easy for us to find someone missing in, in those large areas. Thank you, Gaurav. This will be extremely useful because the disaster season is just around the corner. We will be having the flood and the cyclone. If the trend is the same as the last few years, we might start seeing some incidences of disasters very soon in India and other places. So yes, of course, we should start talking about it and we should start preparing ourselves for that as well. Uh, I have a question for uh, Dr. Payal. Dr. Payal, would you like to please come uh, unmute yourself and have a conversation with us? Dr. Payal Das? Anyway, so now this is an open platform. Anybody who would like to share? Hi, Ruchi. Hi, Dr. Payal. Dr. Payal is yeah. from ICMR. Dr. Payal, how did you find today's session? Was it relevant to what you are doing? And would you like to share with us what are you experiencing at the ground level? Hello. Hello. We can hear you. You are mute right now. I think we are losing Dr. Pyle. Anybody else, meanwhile, has something to contribute to our discussion today? Hello? Yes, Vikrant. Uh, I want to ask a question to uh, Mr. Vikram. Vikram. So, how to get a better relative accuracy using the customized drones? Uh, accuracy related to what? Uh, the video transmission or you are uh, saying about the uh, performance of the drone? 
performance of the model so i think uh, uh, all about the rigorous testing which uh, some uh, company or uh, any organization or any diesel uh, which were doing during their uh, practices for the last couple of years so uh, even when we do our custom drone manufacturing and then uh, before putting them live are so like kind of modules so uh, by that kind of learning you build that kind of efficient system so right now uh, our drones are completely efficient as you might see any other dji drones or any other uh, so you can just uh, take uh, take off them they automatically does uh, if you uh, want them to go anywhere you want to uh, and they have completely fail systems as well fail safe systems as well including the parachutes a uh, couple of them are having parachutes also rth uh, links uh, if c2c are not working gps glitch is there even if gps fails during the automation mission we are able to safely land the drone and we have the obstacle avoidance and all the all the kind of stuff but when you are uh, amateur and building and learning at, as a beginner i think uh, you should take all the precautions before even going and flying in the crowd okay so i want to ask uh, no the how to get a better accuracy uh, like a relative and absolute accuracy in mapping uh, so, so, so there are different modules i think uh, so we generally don't deal with it but we know uh, how it has been done so uh, even if uh, there are modules like ppk and all which gives you uh, the centimeter level uh, accuracy while doing the mapping Okay. I will actually answer this question for the relative and the absolute accuracy. So, if you're talking about mapping, it really depends what what your end goal is. So, if you're actually doing it for public safety, you don't need that kind of an accuracy for your maps, so that they are so uh, they have such an accuracy that like it's called centimeter level accuracy. Because you just need to know where the where the particular hotspot of the point is. So, you are not looking for an absolute accuracy, but a relative accuracy. but where and if you want to talk about the absolute accuracy you need to stretch the map to the ground control point and for ground control point you need to have the known coordinates of that map and for that system if we can if you want to go deep then there is like a ppk and rtk system and further down you can process that data and have that accuracy in your map but i would like to add to this vikrant when you are working in a humanitarian space it is recommended that you don't take a high level accuracy data because that okay. would expose the personal identification information and community identification information which we don't want to do that so it is recommended deliberately you take a low quality image or a low quality video because we don't want to expose too much of what we know so it's okay, okay. to take a low quality data yeah it makes sense and uh, there is one more question about this particular live uh, from uttam from nepal i think so uh, it is lte based network based so even when we are doing the uh, operation here with the latency of only 1 and 5 second you can see anywhere in the world okay another, another question so like you are operating in delhi from like 5th april have you guys faced any instances with your equipment and any emergency procedures have been taken into place as of now while flying over the roads Uh, so since uh, uh, only flick uh, from the first very single day we are uh, using a very uh, uh, standard uh, operating procedure uh, which every single pilot needs to follow whether uh, they are in hurry or not the safety and uh, the security is the most priority so our all pilots follow the same thing uh, which like i can share you the standard operating procedure also how they ensure the security and safety uh so as of now we have not faced any such kind of issues there are some issues uh, which were like uh, because of the rains and all so there were some jammers uh, within the central delhi and the southwest and north delhi area which caused the range issues but nothing as such uh, which caused any trouble during the flight okay yeah uh, that's good to hear like about the transmission um uh, probably on the same spectrum like 2.4 gigahertz where you were operate, operating so there was some interference okay and uh, there was one more question about the coverage of the drone so right now uh, on a single point and point we are covering 2 km radius circle 
so from a single point you can go uh, any in any direction 2 km my will you had a question would you like to ask so even i can answer that by reading it so okay. uh, just to detect crowd uh, uh, this particular uh, thing so it's a cu completely custom build uh, and we are using a very open source uh, algorithm right now we have not built our own uh, detection you must be knowing if a uh, working in area yolo uh, detection and like you can say ml uh, algorithm so i can help uh, somebody who is uh, trying to work on this particular area not an issue and they can collaborate with us and they can also uh, contribute to this particular project uh, on the mapping side we are using the aws and the api calls of the google uh, to put all the data on the maps so my first question was ready to ask gis and qgis uh, which software is best for detecting crowd area and health mapping maybe vikram or saksham either of you can answer that or even uttam i think over to saksham because i have not uh, i am not a particular expert in uh, expert in gis and all so okay. saksham uttam either of you can see that okay i'll take that uh, so you are asking uh, whether arcgis or qgis which software is best for detecting crowd area and health mapping uh, actually both are uh, equally good uh, uh, but qgis is a free software uh, so uh, i would rather say like if you have uh, so the question comes where where are you downloading the data from because both of them would not be giving you data uh, to work with so if you have data like uh, with with crowd uh, information like how much population it is or where are the health maps then both the softwares are equally good uh, google earth uh, is a good choice in fact uh, other than this because they have already mapped uh, various uh, health map have health health mapping related things thank you so much section uh, is there is there any other question coming ashish you wanted to ask something Ashish? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. The person actually mentioned about search and rescue, so I'm keen on uh, knowing about it. Uh, he mentioned about uh, some kind of an app which is uh, related, which actually uh, uh, it is AI based and it will take the color of the which we have to find, you know. Uh, so I'm keen on knowing the name of the app or it's an app based or it's a computer, sure, it's, or it's a cloud based. Uh, sure, it's a cloud based system. Uh, I was doing its beta runs for them, and actually, uh, it's called Lock Eight L O C Eight dot Life. I'll put it the chat window, and you can go onto the website and look at it. And uh, yeah, so you'll you, they have all the tutorials and everything. It is not available. It will be available within a month. But uh, yeah, that system works really well for search and rescue applications, and you can actually put. Throw your data in that uh, application. It's an it's, it's on a cloud platform, and you can actually tell the RGB profile of a particular point of interest you're looking for, and then it can go from there. It can actually tell the point of interest on your images, and actually I have used it with the Pix4D React, and yeah, it works pretty well with that. I would also like to give a <laughs> shout out to Pictera over here. We have used Pictera to do. Uh, ml based counting of roofs and of fallen coconut trees in our uh, odisha project and even to detect the damaged houses so this is something that we can do and pictera is having these uh, uh, sessions going on right now in they keep happening wherein you can come together as, a, as again as a crowdsource effort to detect to train the machine learning algorithm into what exactly you want to detect to use the satellite images to detect something so that Tomorrow, when actual situation happens, you can it can start detecting on its own. So we will do another session where we talk about these tools, especially Pictera, Pix4D, and uh, and Google Earth in details. Not in this session today, but we will go in depth of these tools and probably even make it available as courses on our platforms tomorrow. So if nobody has any further questions, would I take your permission to stop this webinar today? or if anybody still has something you can talk about it 
<clears throat> I think we can take last question uh, with uh, from Siva. Siva, and it is only how do you manage during night time, and are you using any night vision cameras? So uh, for just general surveillance, uh, earlier we didn't use any night uh, vision cameras, but now uh, we are bringing night vision cameras also uh, into the you can say crowdsource effort. Uh, but on the streets in the city areas, always there is a street light. And our drones uh, with that kind of HD and fully, uh, 1080 or 2K feed, you are uh, clearly, uh, the crowd is clearly visible. So we have done uh, it almost uh, during uh, four to five nights where there was uh, some uh, possible threat in uh, different areas of Delhi. And uh, we were able to detect crowd really well, even uh, within the narrow streets where the light was uh, available. Thank you so much. Uh, Ramakrishna, you have a question? So uh, Ramakrishna, Takshim had explained how they have used drones with his platform. And uh, we may take a detailed understanding of InShine when we, when we start talking about tools. But uh, the basic is that you fly drones, you make a photogrammetry uh, 2D map out, out of uh, the available tools, then you upload a photogrammetry image onto InShine, and then you start using it as a crowdsource effort for doing annotations, classifications, and labeling. So this is the summary, but uh, a detail you would know when you actually do it. But we will we may take some exercises offline or in another course that we conduct for you. Uh, any other questions from anybody? Okay, so I would like to invite all of you. I have shared the link of Slack in uh, all the emails that I've sent out to you. Uh, besides that, you can know about everything that we are doing on our social media channels on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, WhatsApp, and even Slack. And uh, we will take these discussions offline. So everything that you come across that you want to share with the community, you can do it on, on the Slack channel that we have. And uh, if you have any links that you want to share, which will help us improve our knowledge or anything which is going around in the world, you can, you're welcome to do that. And uh, with this, I would like to end today's webinar. And I would like to really thank each of you for being a part of it. And I would also thank each of you who registered for the webinar, but could not be here today for various reasons. This webinar will be available on Facebook, YouTube, and even on our website for some time. So all of you are welcome to talk about it. Thank you so much for joining and see you all very soon. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Ruchi. Thank you. Bye-bye.